Most engineers, when they hear about Redis, they think about cache. But Redis can be used as a cache, a database, or even a message broker. Redis is basically a data structure server because it supports various data structures such as strings, hashes, lists, sets, sorted sets, bitmaps, and more. And in this video, we'll take a closer look at the reason that makes Redis so fast and popular. So let's get started. Redis stands for Remote Dictionary Server. It is an open source in-memory data structure store. Now Redis is commonly used as a caching layer to store frequently accessed data in memory, reducing the need to fetch data from slower disk-based databases and improve application performance. Imagine you have a web application where users frequently view their profiles. Fetching this data from a disk-based database like MySQL every time can be slow. Instead, you can use Redis to cache the user profile data. So when a user requests their profile, the application first checks Redis. If the data is in Redis, it's a cache hit. It is returned immediately. If the data is not in Redis, it's a cache miss. The application fetches it from the primary database, stores it in Redis, and then returns it to the user. The data in Redis can have a TTL or time to live, so it can automatically expire after a certain time, for example, say five minutes, to ensure fresh data is there all the time. Redis can also function as primary database, especially for use cases where speed and low latency are critical. Imagine you are building a gaming application where you need to maintain a real-time leaderboard. Players' scores are constantly updated and you need to display the top 10 players instantly. So you can use Redis's sorted set data structure to store player scores. Each player score is added to the sorted set with their ID as the key and the score as the value. This automatically sorts the scores so you can quickly retrieve the top 10 players using a single command like this. Redis can then persist this data to disk using RDB or AOF to ensure durability. A message broker is a system that enables communication between different parts of an application by passing messages. Redis can act as a lightweight message broker using its PubSub or Publish Subscribe feature. So imagine you are building a chat application where users need to receive real-time notifications when someone sends them a message. Each user subscribes to a Redis channel, say user123. When a message is sent to a user, the application publishes the message to the corresponding channel. Redis delivers the message to all subscribers of that channel in real-time. The client, for example a web or mobile app, listens for messages on the subscribed channel and displays them to the user. It's simple to set up compared to more complex message brokers like Kafka or RabbitMQ. And so, if you need fast access to temporary data, use it as a cache. If you need real-time data processing and storage, use Redis as a database. And if you need real-time messaging, use it as a message broker. This flexibility combined with its speed and simplicity is why Redis is so widely adopted across industries. In fact, a single Redis server can handle up to 100,000 queries per second. But what makes Redis extremely fast? Understanding the reasons to make it extremely fast will level up your software engineering and system design skills. So let's check it out. First of all, Redis data is all stored in memory, which means that our reading and writing of data are all completed in memory. In-memory storage means that Redis stores all its data in RAM or random access memory instead of a disk like traditional databases such as MySQL, PostgreSQL, or MongoDB. RAM is much faster to read from and write to compared to disk storage. Here in the diagram, at the top, we have CPU registers and various levels of cache, which are the fastest but have limited capacity. RAM sits in the middle with an access time of around 120 nanoseconds, making it significantly faster than SSDs or HDDs, which operate in the microsecond to millisecond range. Redis leverages RAM instead of disk storage, allowing it to deliver ultra-low latency performance compared to traditional databases that rely mostly on disk-based storage. Not only that, Redis is also a key value in memory database. It internally constructs a hash table. This means that when you request a value using a specific key, Redis can retrieve it in O1 time complexity, which is constant time regardless of the dataset size. And this makes Redis extremely fast for lookups, as it doesn't need to scan the entire dataset like traditional databases that rely on disk storage. 
Redis also uses a single threaded event loop to handle commands. This means that Redis uses a single thread to handle all client requests and perform operations on data. Commands are executed only one at a time in the order they are received. This avoids the complexity of managing logs or race conditions. And since Redis is primarily memory bound, that is data is stored in the RAM, the single threaded model is efficient and avoids the overhead of context switching. Now, while Redis is single threaded for command execution, it uses non-blocking IO to handle multiple client connections simultaneously. Non-blocking IO is a way for program to handle multiple tasks without getting stuck waiting for one task to finish. Since Redis uses a single thread to handle all client requests, this thread runs an event loop, which continuously checks for new events. For example, incoming requests or data to send back to clients. This allows it to serve many clients concurrently without being bottlenecked by IO operations. This achieves concurrency, but it is not parallelism. Now I have previously made a full video to explain concurrency versus parallelism in detail here. Please do check it out if you have any doubts. This single threaded model used by Redis can however become a limitation in scenarios where the workload is CPU intensive. For example, complex computations or heavy data processing. Or if the data set is very large and the single thread model cannot keep up with the volume of request. In such cases, Redis can be scaled horizontally using Redis cluster, which partitions data across multiple Redis instances, or by using Redis modules to offload specific tasks. Redis also operates on simple, well-optimized data structures such as strings, bitmaps, hashes, and hyperlog logs. Since all operations in Redis are executed directly in memory, they require minimal CPU resources, resulting in exceptionally fast performance. I'll be diving deep into some of the most important Redis data types, exploring the use cases and performance characteristics in my upcoming videos. So do stay tuned. All right, the last one. Redis is written in C which is a low-level language that provides fine-grained control over memory and CPU usage. It means that Redis can manage system resources like memory and CPU very efficiently and precisely. For example, in C, developers can manually allocate and deallocate memory using functions like malloc and free. This allows Redis to optimize memory usage. Redis can allocate exactly the amount of memory it needs and free it when it is no longer needed, reducing any wastage. It also avoids overhead because higher level languages like Java often uses garbage collection, which can introduce delays and unpredictability. C avoids this by letting Redis manage memory directly. C also allows developers to write code that runs very close to the hardware with minimal overhead. This means faster execution because C code is compiled directly into machine code, which the CPU can execute without additional layer of interpretation, unlike languages like Python or Ruby. Redis can also implement algorithms in a way that takes full advantage of the CPU capabilities, such as using bitwise operations or optimizing for cache locality. The combination of fine-grained control over memory and CPU usage along with C's low-level nature makes Redis extremely fast and efficient. As you design and optimize your systems, understanding how Redis achieves such speed can help you make better architectural decisions. If you found this explanation helpful and want to dive deeper into Redis, its architecture and how you can leverage it in your projects, do check out my YouTube video on distributed locking here, where I break it down in an easy to understand way. In upcoming videos, I'll be diving deeper into some of the Redis most important data types and the real world applications. And if you found this video useful, please make sure to like, subscribe and turn on notifications to stay updated. See you in the next one.